So for today, we have a senior speak from Naya Sabah. I stepped up to the end line for the first time. My volleyball light in my left hand, my right hand preparing to hit the ball all the way to the other side. With my right foot forward, I tossed the ball in the air. With my left, I stepped into my serve, made contact with the ball, and watched as it flew straight into the net. A barrier that prevented most of the other girls in the clinic. A barrier that I never thought would get shorter over time. This is how I chose to feel about high school for most of my life. Each year, I saw the barrier starting to condense to a shorter version. My goal was college. My first day at Walker's, a teacher who was never afraid to shine walked into my sixth grade choristers. She began to talk about the face method, drawing Sally and John on the board. Sally having beautiful curly hair and John being a farmer, saying all cows eat grass. Through the artistry, she hummed a melody that I could still repeat. I knew we would be best friends from then on. Ms. McAlpine's confidence inspired me to play volleyball. I too wanted something that made me feel happy and confident. I remembered how the net blocked me from serving to the other side, yet I still tried as hard as I could. I spent the whole practice trying to serve the pristine white ball over. My last try, I took a deep breath, repeated the same exact thing I did with every other failed serve. I held my breath as I watched it brush the tape of the net and roll down onto the 10 foot line. I had never felt so happy. I never knew my love for volleyball would become so serious, but it did. I played club volleyball starting in seventh grade. The path the volleyball took connected me to people I would have never met. It soon became my go-to outlet to have fun and feel comfortable. I never really told anyone besides my family and best friend, but high school was hard. Moving from a different environment you loved so much back to your old is never a clean transition for anyone. I convinced myself I was only liked in volleyball and that admiration depended on the quality of my past set hit or serve. I never realized it, but I would isolate myself from groups because I was too afraid of rejection. But in volleyball, I was loud. I felt in command. I was part of the group and felt so included. No matter where I played, I was always part of the team. It gave me the confidence to do anything I wanted and talk to people. Before I knew it, in eighth grade, I was learning to jump serve, having trouble keeping my serve short. Time flew by during the year when I played volleyball. I continued to think I would play forever until junior year. For the first time, I felt myself struggling to restrain my serve, serving it past the opposite end line more than ever. I realized soon I would have to leave. My barrier was almost non-existent. Soon I would have to stop playing volleyball. When I told my family I would never be able to play at the D1 state schools I wanted to attend, they told me about intramural volleyball and how it's still a good outlet to practice and have fun. I tell myself they are right. The remaining piece of doubt settles in my mind when I hear their rational solutions. I hear a voice in my head tell me, it won't be a team, we won't defeat competitors. And the thought most often heard, will I still feel confident and happy? I've played volleyball at Walker since sixth grade. However, my senior year, my dad convinced me to add open play at the YMCA to try and get a taste of how I could still play in college. I met so many people by playing there and surprised myself with how my skill changed. It took me to some time to realize, but the connections there that I made were the proof that I needed to convince myself I would be all right in college. The way people would start conversations with me and the authenticity in their tones sparked an epiphany in my mind. No matter where I go and what I do, I have the confidence and skills to talk to people. I was feeling completely new and refreshed driving to my Saturday game, like the surface of my mind had been peeled back to reveal a person who finally felt present in the moment. My barrier had collapsed, but I still remained. I warmed up with my team, presenting my new person on court. It was my turn to serve. I grabbed the pristine white ball with which I had so much trouble with before. Slapped it to the ground a few times, took a deep breath, repeated every step I did for every serve before that, and served every ball in. Thank you.